welcome to Medellin in Colombia. This is a city with a somewhat negative reputation, especially because of things that happened in the past. It's also a city that's really trying to change its ways now in the present and has really come a long way in the last 20 years to the point where it's now like a real hotspot for digital nomads exactly. and tourists come from all over the world. We're really excited to explore. Got a lot to show you. Today we're just going to be exploring the center of the city and also Comuna 13, which is a really interesting spot for a number of reasons here in Medellin. We began the day in Plaza Cisneros, in the heart of Medellin's downtown, La Candelaria district. This plaza is now more commonly known as Parque de las Luces because of the 300 pillars of light that rise up out of the square, creating a sort of sci-fi artificial forest that has become a popular meeting point and a place to relax. We then made our way up towards Plaza Botero, stopping at the impressive National Palace Mall on the way. Before arriving in the plaza, named after Fernando Botero, one of Colombia's most famous famous artist where you can see the ornate Palace of Culture, some of Botero's many sculptures and visit the Museo de Antioquia which houses plenty of famous artwork by Botero and others. Our next stop was Comuna 13, a community of closely stacked houses on the western slopes of the city. We took a free walking tour with Zippy Tours, whose local tour guides have lived within the community throughout their lives. We saw some incredible artwork on our way into the Comuna, as well as being given a special performance by a local dance group. Comuna 13 is now a lively, bustling community and one of the most popular tourist hotspots in the city. As well as the incredible street art that you'll find on every spare piece of wall, there are also countless shops selling everything from artwork to ice creams and a very convenient escalator system that winds its way up through the community to save your legs on the very steep hills. Also finished with an invitation into our guide's home where she explains a little more about the violent and troubled history of the community and how this dramatic change has come about. From her home we also got the most incredible views out over the community and the rest of Medellin. We rode the escalators back down to the metro station and then took the train to the north of the city to ride the gondola up to Parque Arvi, a huge and popular park for hiking and other activities. Unfortunately, we only made it halfway up because the gondola to the park was closed for maintenance. It was still a cool experience though and one we recommend adding to your Medellin itinerary. So today we've come to the El Poblado district, which is one of the wealthier districts here in yes. Medellin. I think a lot of digital nomads, expats, mm. and even a lot of tourists in this area, which is very nice. You have a lot of skyscrapers, greenery around, yeah. a lot of shopping centers and things like that. Yeah, very and, safe as well. And this castle behind <laughs> us which makes us feel like we're not even in South America anymore. No. It makes us feel like we're back in Europe yeah. somewhere seeing this kind of building. It's called El Castillo Museum, a castle that was built around the 1930s based on like French castles in the Loire Valley. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. It's just really surreal to, yeah. to see it here in the middle of Medellin. It makes you feel like you're in a totally different country. Yeah.
We explored the small but beautiful gardens, meeting some cool characters along the way, and then were given a guided tour of the castle itself. We weren't allowed to film inside, but it was a lot like walking through a UK stately home, so check out our UK country houses playlist if you'd like an idea of what to expect. The views from the castle balconies were also well worth the entry fee. can also come a little bit just outside of the city centre and there's two really cool attractions right next to each other. One is the botanical garden which we're in now yeah. which is free to enter which, which is, is amazing. one yeah. of the first botanical gardens that has been free to enter. So we're going to wander around here now and then a little bit later on we're also going to go to the Parque Explorer which is a big interactive exhibition almost like an interactive theme park yeah. where you get lots of different exhibitions that you can experience. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited about that one because mm -hmm. every time we've been to something similar it was really really a lot of fun. Yeah, it's like a museum but for big kids yeah. <laughs> and little kids. I think I would prefer this one to the one in Bogota, I think that's the one we've been to. Apart from the big greenhouse area, the rest of the botanical garden there was a bit. Mm -hmm. But this one is like just so nice, feels like we're back in somewhere like Costa Rica or something, mm -hmm. or in the Amazon jungle. It's, nice. it's pretty. Especially for free. Mm -hmm. Seems like every botanical garden here has some kind of central structure, which is like the centerpiece. And this one has this awesome like roof. I don't know how to describe it. It's cool, yeah, like canopy. Next, we headed across the road to the Park Explorer Museum. This fun interactive space is filled with different exhibitions that play with your senses and make you feel like a big kid. We started our tour in the aquarium, which was full of some beautiful and unique fish and amphibians. There was a small dinosaur exhibit outside with some impressive specimens and spaces dedicated to sound. Optical illusions. and movie making, where you could even create your own movies with hilarious results. <laughs> Overall, Park Explorer is definitely a fun thing to do, especially on a rainy day in the city. So today we have come to the Piedra de Peñal. So it's just behind the camera right now, but you can already see behind us that the view is going to be unbelievable from up yeah, there. Yeah, we so. can't wait to climb it. I mean, there's 700 steps all the way to the top. So we'll see how that will go. <laughs> I'm sure we'll be fine. But I remember the first time I've seen photos of it on Instagram. And I genuinely thought this was Photoshop because it just looked so unreal that yeah. th this thing existed. It's and crazy. now I'm right here. So it's just unbelievable. There it is. Let's go climb it.
After an exhausting climb up many, many steps, we finally made it to the top and were treated to some of the best views in all of Colombia. After soaking up as much of the incredible view as we could, we began our descent. I love that view of Colombo from your way mm -hmm. down. It should be easier. But well, it's not quite 700 steps, it's a little bit less unless you go to the top. Hello. We made it. <laughs> wow, what an amazing experience. I That's... know, it was crazy. I mean, the 700 steps were quite steep, but we went up very quickly, actually. We didn't even feel it. I'm sure yeah. I will feel my legs tomorrow. Maybe. So it's a good workout, but if you're not used to steps or hiking a lot, then I think you might struggle a little bit. Well, just take your time. The view is amazing. Well, every step is yeah. worth the effort. Like, <laughs> the view just gets better and yeah, better the I mean, higher you go. Uh, that's actually not included in price of the tour, so you have to mm. pay an extra 20,000 million pesos per person to go up, but I think it's worth it's every worth every little sure. penny. It's easily one of the best views we've seen in Colombia and probably one of the best views we've seen on this entire trip. The landscape here is just incredible. Our bucket list. Bucket list ticked. Tick. Our tour is going to continue soon. We're going to head it to the town of Guatape, which is the closest town to here. Really colourful and pretty yeah, town. Yeah, excited about that. We're going to have an yeah. explore around there and then the final thing is the boat ride later on, which we're also really excited about. Looking at this landscape, it's going to be so cool to be out on the Yeah, it just gives you a water. different perspective. So Guatape was supposedly voted the second most colourful city in the world about four years ago and you can I see can't why. I say that it is, <laughs> it is very colourful, I love it here. It's really beautiful but it's beautiful. very, it's also different to like other colourful cities I think and towns we've seen here in South America like the style is yeah. just a little bit different, a little bit unique. So, so like the pattern on the yeah. side of the building, it's beautiful, It's really beautiful. Stunning. We're gonna have a good wander around here, yeah. show you as much colour and uh, artwork as we can. Take a lot of pickies. We could have walked around Guatape for hours. Every street and every corner seemed to have something new and colorful to see. And in hindsight, we definitely would have liked to spend a night there. But after a quick lunch in town, we hopped back in the bus and drove a short distance to the dock where we boarded our boat out onto the waterways. The board ride gave us a chance to see Piedro del Peñol from a different perspective and highlighted even further the beauty of this place. It was no wonder that we also spotted countless huge mansions dotting the shores and some very luxurious looking boats on the water. We also got to see Finca La Manuela, Pablo Escobar's old lake house, which is now close to the public for obvious reasons. A visit to Guatape was the icing on the cake of what was already an incredible experience in Medellin. This place quickly became one of our favorite cities in the world and there was still so much that we didn't get to see or do properly whilst we were there. We can see why it has become so popular with tourists, expats and digital nomads alike and can definitely see ourselves spending some more time here in the future. Thanks for watching and see you on our next adventure.